Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for coming back. In today's video we're going to be doing a this versus that. We're going to be looking at some common products which are targeted at sensitive skin versus products that I think are more appropriate. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. Let me know in the comments down below what products you would like to see on this versus that. <laughs> Sound like a game show host. <laughs> anyway, without further ado, let's get into this video. So my first product that I'm going to compare is the classic Aveeno lotion, which is something that loads of people get not only to help with their eczema or with their dry and sensitive skin for psoriasis, this is also something which is commonly prescribed. I have been prescribed this so many times, I cannot explain. I have so many of these 500 milliliter tubs. In fact, you can see on the back that it's actually a prescribed one. I have also lathered this on as instructed to do so by doctors and it eventually had little to no impact whatsoever. It does give a light sort of relief at the start. It is predominantly a, an oatmeal based cream I actually ended up having a huge reaction to this and came out in a full body rash. I had really, really swollen hands, a really swollen face, um, super duper itchy and it was really, really uncomfortable. This is prescribed for babies, this is prescribed for all ages and is usually the go-to. However, I have since discovered Balmins, who are a more herbal sort of brand. I, I'm very aware that people sort of turn off a little bit when you talk about herbal brands, but I love this brand so much and I so wish that this had been brought out before. This is another thing that you can get on your prescription. Bearing in mind, if you want to tell your doctor that you may not be so suited to the Aveeno, do opt for the Balmins. I'd suggest doing a patch test like anything before trying it out. This is the Daily Moisturising Cream. There are also a variety of other products, but as a daily moisturising cream, I would opt for this one over this one. Plainly because this has a bit more sort of medicinal healing properties, I feel like I can put this on sort of cracked skin compared to if I were to use this. However, as you will know, I actually opted more for a no moisture approach, but if you are looking for a moisturiser, I would opt for a Balmins over Aveeno. I love a deodorant. <laughs> Deodorants are full of chemicals, parabens, scents, loads and loads of nasties that people with sensitive skin do not like. And I have been looking into different deodorants. You know that I have used the salt stick from Salt of the Earth from salt, from salt of the Earth before. So this is another one that I have looked into. This is their unscented natural deodorant from Salt of the Earth. I have loved this so much. It has been so effective. 100% natural, it's vegan. Um, I really, really love this one. It has natural mineral salts, including aloe vera and magnesium. And I have also reviewed this one. This is from Mugu, another brand which you'll have heard me talk about on my channel before. I have to say, with these two, it is very, very neck and neck. The only upside of this one is you get slightly more in it, so it does last a bit longer. The good thing is, is this actually is smaller, so if you're trying to go um, to perhaps a party when we finally get back to, to normal, or if you have a small handbag, this one is actually very good. This has no bacterial and no smell. This one is 100% aluminium free. So most deodorants actually work with salts and aluminium to help to close the pores, to help stop you from sweating. And I love the tagline for this brand. <laughs> they say that they believe that alu aluminium belongs in your roof and not in your body. And and I love that message. I love that ethos. I couldn't agree more. I hate the thought of loads of 
bizarre chemicals that are totally unnatural being inserted into the body. Our slightly alkaline formula works by allowing you to perspire in a natural process. So it helps to control the bacteria, which is what actually makes you smell rather than stopping you from sweating altogether and clogging those pores. So I love this idea. I would actually say that the Mugu does actually slightly have the edge because I think that I'm actually having to reapply this slightly more. So it's really, really neck and neck, but I would probably edge more towards this Mugu. <laughs> Brands such as Sure will give you antibacterial, sort of invisible dry, all the sort of keen catchphrases that they give on marketing, but actually on closer examination you see all the added ingredients which are added to them even ones that are labeled sensitive hyposensitive that sort of thing i would always just make sure that you read the label make sure that there's nothing that's going to be out to your skin i used to get really big burns down the inside of my underarms and it was really really uncomfortable and it caused me a lot of pain and i used to have really big sort of spreading scars and sores dry skin all around my back as well because of it. This also used to spread onto my chest and onto my inner arms and it was so so painful so I'm so glad to have found some deodorants that work. So again another common product that people think is really good for sensitive skin is Johnson's baby oil and baby oil I used to be a massive fan of especially when I was using the bath when I would come out of the bath that sort of thing so and it is commonly used as a product for sensitive sensitive skin or indeed for baby skin this one is actually the hypoallergenic so big tick for our sensitive skin and hypoallergenic friends however is it when you actually look on closer examination there is perfume added into it I am super sensitive to everything that has perfume. Maybe I'm just super sensitive. <laughs> That's for another day. Um, this is uh, this has added perfume in it, and for those people that cannot process perfumes whatsoever, like me, um, this is an absolutely no go. You could think that you're you know, with the best intention that you're trying to help your skin or indeed help your child, but I would not be opting for something like this, especially, it's really confusing because it's shown as hypoallergenic and it is clear, so it gives you the illusion that actually you are using something that is really, really good for the skin. If you were wanting to use something like this, I would more go so for bio oil. So bio oil is very good and everyone knows it. It is um, very good for things such as stretch marks and, in, you know, perhaps you want to use this for if you're into massage, I would opt for something like this. This is also really, really rather cheap. However, if you're using this because you're wanting to get rid of scars, whether that be from having a child, stretch marks, or whether that be from burns. I used to use bio oil on this burn here. Can, can you see? It's actually very, very faded now. <laughs> I very much burnt my whole arm here actually can we I had a very severe burn on my arm and I religiously used bio oil however what I feel has worked so much better is the Balmain's rosehip scar oil I actually used to use quite a lot of scar hip oil um to help with my burn and yeah I feel like this is a perfect sort of combination. The only thing is is this is much more expensive than bio oil but I actually think this is worth it because it's kind of got the um, sort of like advanced healing properties that rosehip oil has as well cum culminated by the Balmain's ingredients as well so I would opt for this one and definitely put this in the bin. <laughs> So in terms of spot management, I would say do opt for companies such as The Ordinary who have very, very little added ingredients. I would say though, if you are looking at your skin thinking, I do have some spots, but it's not a huge, a great deal. Something like this can be actually quite 
invasive to your skin and can be quite overpowering especially if you've got sensitive skin. I will link the video up just now of my review of this product. I actually find that it is a bit too much for my skin at certain points. I have used very very little of it but if you want to do sort of like a spot treatment perhaps use like a cotton bud and just sort of dab it on your exact points of your spots. On a more day-to-day -day basis I'd use something like this which is the Mugu Gentle Micro Exfoliating Powder. I, if you want to see my little skin routine with this do let me know in the comments down below. We have brands such as Aussie who love lots of products to do with our hair and they're a leading brand for all sorts of hair care. However they're are so many additives once again added into their shampoos and products. We have loads of ingredients just on the back of this bottle that I'm allergic to. So that includes all things with cinnamon, um, citronelle, lemon, sodium benzoate, all the big hitters that can have huge reactions to the skin. I have found Olsen as a brand to be super super good for sensitive skin. This has zero fragrances, zero colorants, it's asthma and allergy friendly and it's um and it's made in Denmark. So this is actually their leave-in conditioner spray that I have used today actually. And it's a lovely very easy way to help with tangles, particularly if you have had any highlights. It's a very luscious leave-in treatment. I'm so delighted that I have found this brand and I'll leave it in the description box down below. You may think that you're picking up something really quick and easy with a brand like Aussie, very traditional house brand that you know you love but there are a lot of added things into this and this is why you may be having very severe reactions as well. Brands such as Charlotte Tilbury are big, very, very well known brands. They are very good at advertising for having very few additives, very good at having zero scents. This is a really good combination. You'll um, no, it's the pillow talk combination. However, I have found a very very similar one as you will know from my other videos. This is the Mugu. I, I love Mugu. <laughs> um, this is the Mugu vegan brand and I love the fact that they are not tested on animals. They're much more sustainable. This is recyclable packaging. This is actually just sort of cardboard or something and I feel like the results are very very similar and as well naturally with Charlotte Tilbury there is a huge huge difference in the price that you're going to be looking at for Mugu products compared to Charlotte Tilbury. Um, so you can get a saving with this it's more sustainable, they are 100% vegan, they're not testing on animals at all in their supply chain. I think they're much more up our street. <laughs> L'Occitane, oh, oh my goodness, I used to apply so much of L'Occitane hand cream. This is one of my mini ones, I used to have massive tubes of it. I love hand cream so much because I feel like they're so important to keep hydrated, not cracked and I feel like it's one of the first sort of places that someone sees is, is your hands and you can't look. They're, they are exposed to the sun all the time and it's such a sign of aging. As you may know, I rave about the Balmain's hand cream. I apply it every single night now. It is so soothing. It doesn't have that sort of clammy texture that conventional hand creams have because they have a lot of additives. They want to leave the scent of the hand cream open to the air. It's also quite hard for your hands to absorb some of the chemicals that are um, added into conventional hand creams. Whilst this goes in very very quickly your hands actually feel nourish but dry. You don't have a clammy sort of feeling to them and I cannot believe that I didn't know about Balmain's before so I'll leave that down in the description box below as well. <laughs> Finally this is something called topical steroids. This is hydrocortisone. If you're on this channel you will be very familiar with anyway. These are often to prescribed to people who have eczema or psoriasis or acne, different skin conditions as a quick win to help with your skin. I would say 
<laughs> Let's get rid of that immediately and try and get to the root cause of your problem, whether that be something is causing your skin to react. As I have alluded to, a lot of products can cause your skin to react. It may also be that you're reacting to food, stress or your diet. I would suggest going to the root cause and opting to scale back some of the products that you're putting into your body before applying something like a topical steroid, especially repeatedly, as this can lead to topical steroid over-dependency and then when you come off of them, topical steroid withdrawal. And I'll leave the video linked here to what that is. I suggest that you have a look at what products you're putting into your body, try to mitigate the amount of chemicals that you're putting into your body before then applying more unnatural chemicals to try and deflate the problem that your skin's trying to deal with. If you're in that stage where you are really, really struggling with your skin due to topical steroid withdrawal, I would then opt for something like either of these, which is the Bria Organic Balm or the Balm and Skin Salvation. This Bria is slightly more expensive than the Balm and Skin Salvation but they are both very very good. I would say though if you are going to opt for no moisture treatment I would opt for not using these whatsoever. If you're really really struggling, I've had someone message me saying they struggle to eat because they're cracking so much at their mouth, perhaps you could use some of one of these in the cracks just to help soothe that open. If you can, I would opt for zero. <laughs> So fingers crossed that helped you. Let me know in the comments down below if you find it useful. It can be really, really overwhelming trying to find what products work for you. Make sure that you're always patch testing. Make sure that you leave it for more, I would say, than 48 hours to make sure that you haven't had a reaction as you can get lots of delayed reactions. I am not a medical professional, I'm just speaking from personal experience as a person who has really, really struggled over the years and I would have loved someone to anchor it all down and let me know what things I should be using. So there we have it guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you find this video useful. Fingers crossed you have taken something away. Let me know in the comment section down below if you're going to try some of the recommended products that I've highlighted in this video. And if you also have found that some of the sensitive skin products don't actually work very well for you, let me know if there are any products that you'd like to see me review on this versus that. Please make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.